Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Weird DMs. This is your first time watching. Basically I read a bunch of confessions and we speculate on which ones are fake and we suspend reality to believe the fake ones that are good enough to be uh, believed in. So today's episode is all about Valentine's Day, which is, you know, just me cashing in on a Hallmark holiday, but also maybe we'll learn something today, like the best way to break up with someone, uh, the best way to ruin a relationship, or maybe the best way to improve a relationship. So let's Let's get get into into it. it. This one's titled, Diabetes Breakup. Hey, Noel. So two years ago, around January, I started going on dates with this girl. Everything was going great. We went go-karting. Sounds like a winner to me. We went out for dinner. We even got to meet her parents. Sometime around the beginning of February, she found out she had diabetes because of the crazy headaches she would get when eating sugar. I told her it was no problem, and I would help her any way, I think you meant to say I could, to accommodate, as anyone would. Then Valentine's Day comes around and I had planned a whole evening, which was all about eating candy. No. <laughs> You fucking asshole. That's not really in there. And I was literally on her way to her house as I call her and say, I'm five minutes out when she says she doesn't want a relationship anymore because it'd be too stressful for me to keep up with her diabetes. I was literally on the way to her house as I call her and say, I'm five minutes out when she says she doesn't want a relationship anymore because it would be too stressful for me to keep up with her diabetes and doctor's visits. Mind you, I'm minding. I had flowers, candles, and $75 worth of chocolate. No, it was just gifts. In the car as I was about to pull into her driveway. Long story short, found out she was really talking with her ex and all the diabetes story was a lie. Oh, and Ashley, if you're seeing this, how are you 21 and still working at your parents' restaurant? (laughs) Hey man, what's wrong with working at a restaurant? I was with you, but that ending bit, that's a, that's a lame ass diss, man. There's nothing wrong with working at a restaurant or helping your family business. That's, that's pretty normal. (laughs) You're just letting some of your spoiled creep out of you right there. Um, but either way, lying about diabetes is, is so funny. It's probably the best way to break up with someone on Valentine's day, or at least close to it. It's so, uh, ironic and condescending. (laughs) I'm sorry, whoever this is, but I think it's hysterical that she broke up with you like that. And I kind of respect it, which is terrible, but you know, I don't know you, man. I, what I do know is you got broken up with around Valentine's day and she told you it's because of diabetes. And that's just funny. Oh, God. The only way to make this better is if you would have found out that she was lying while, I don't know, you, you caught her at like a donut shop or something, just wolfing down a couple of big old donuts. That would have been the icing on the cake. We're not even a few minutes into this video and we've learned the best way to dump somebody. Just say you have diabetes. Valentine's date turned into a tickle monster. <laughs> uh, no, literally. I went on this blind date last Valentine's Day that my coworker set up. It was at this cute bar and he wasn't fugly. That's, I don't know. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. And he wasn't fugly. He wasn't fucking ugly. He was just ugly. This ogre had me enjoying myself. She didn't say that. This ogre had me enjoying myself and the conversation was nice. About 30 minutes in, I had to go pee. So I left to use the restroom. When I came back, his whole demeanor changed. He was rude and snide to me. I told him I was leaving and the date was over. As I got up to leave, he grabbed my arm and started tickling my armpits. He wouldn't stop aggressively tickling me in the middle of this bar. Were you on a date with Will Ferrell? This is weird. Literally everyone started staring because he was yelling tickle fight. I slapped him in the face because literally, what the fuck, LMAO? (laughs) I left and never heard from the tickle monster again. You know, now might be a good time to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is (laughs) BetterHelp. If you've been considering going to therapy to get on top of your mental health, then BetterHelp might be a good place to start. BetterHelp has over 20,000 licensed therapists. BetterHelp is not a crisis line and it's not self-help. It is professional therapy done securely online. BetterHelp's goal is to help you assess your needs and match you with your own professional licensed therapist. If you ever tried finding someone in your area, you know sometimes that's tough. It could take a little while um, and sometimes those places are booked up and it's hard to get a hold of a therapist. BetterHelp seeks to get you communicating with someone uh, Uh, in as little as 48 hours uh, and they offer this worldwide you can log into your account anytime and message a therapist uh, and the idea is to get you timely responses Uh, plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you don't have to sit 
in the waiting room like you normally do with traditional therapy it can be a bit more uh i don't know private better help wants to facilitate good therapeutic matches uh, they make it easy and free to change therapists if you need to it's generally more affordable than traditional therapy and they also offer financial aid so if you're interested you can go to betterhelp.com slash noel miller uh, and if you sign up now you get 10 percent off your first month use my link uh, all right, now let's get back into the video. <laughs> the ugliest man in the group chat. <laughs> oh, man. What's up, Noel? Hey, back in high school, I was in a group chat with about five or six other guys. One of the guys in the group was dating this girl, who also had a group chat with about five or six other girls in it. Valentine's Day rolled around, and for some reason, the members of the girls' group chat decided to rank the members of my group chat by attractiveness. Man. This episode of Euphoria is about to get brutal. The girlfriend sent a screenshot of the results to my friend, who then sent it out in our group chat. I got ranked last by every single girl. I've never lived it down, and my self-esteem has never fully recovered. Adam, there's only one way to fix this. Lock all your friends in a basement. Now there's no one to rank, and you'll always be number one. Well, it wouldn't be weird DMs if we didn't read a poop story, so let's get to it. Toilet interference. Hey Noel, when I was in fourth grade, there was this girl I really liked, but I was too pussy to talk to her. Hmm. But on Valentine's Day, I built up the courage to finally talk to her. Only problem was, uh, my buddy liked her too, and he was a little more direct than me. He didn't know I liked her, by the way, so he wasn't a total dick. Uh, you're also in fourth grade, so who cares? Anyway, when Valentine's Day arrived, uh, I see him speaking to my crush. I overheard some of the conversation, and he was saying that he had never kissed a girl before and really wanted her to be his first. This was total cat, by the way, since he had kissed like three girls before that. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. If you told her that, my friend, that would have been dirty mackin'. She eventually agrees, and I stand there alone. They decide to kiss in the bathroom for some reason, and on the way, my crush, for whatever reason, asked me to join them. Wow. Not to partake. No, 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 no. Just to watch <laughs> he's getting cucked in fourth grade man i don't know if i was just stupid or if i was just desperate for what little action i could get no dude you're in fourth grade you're in fourth how are you supposed to know your crush tells you in fourth grade follow me of course you're gonna follow but i said yeah sure and i came with the rest isn't so interesting really they kissed i watched i wonder what the fuck i was doing and i stayed afterwards pondering my very existence uh your existence was the friend zone that's what that was. You found out very early you got a friend zone face. Yep. Hey, she saw your face and she was like, that guy looks like a good buddy. You look like a good sidekick. That's what she said. She chose you to go along with her uh, nastiness. You might have a case of gay best friend face, which is nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's just your face. So you know, I don't know if it's like that today because, you know, kids grow up, their faces change, you know, they grow into their face. But I think that's all that happened. So sorry that happened to you, bro, but uh, you're also in fourth grade. You're, I'm sure you're all right. Now, if you're a grown adult and your crush is still making you watch them kiss other dudes, then I would say maybe um, we have a problem in your approach. All that said, that wasn't even a poop story. Here I, you know, jumped to conclusions. I saw a toilet. I thought poop. And we didn't get it, so let's get it now. Valentine's Day. I dookied myself. A few years ago, the guy I was dating at the time. Why not just a guy you were dating a few years ago? What do you mean at the time? You were dating a guy a few years ago. Redundant. <laughs> Idiot. Stamped. A few years ago, the guy I was dating took me out to a really nice restaurant. I wasn't diagnosed for being lactose intolerant at the time, but Jesus Christ, I wish I was. Does anyone get formally diagnosed for lactose intolerant? I think shitting yourself is how you get diagnosed, right? No one actually goes to the doctor and goes, I think I'm lactose intolerant. Like, you just know. You have milk and cookies, and you destroy the bathroom, and you go, yeah, I'll never do that again. Uh, maybe there's, uh, Maybe I have a chocolate cookie intolerance. Then you go to eat ice cream, and you do it again. And typically, you're just sort of like, yeah, the, you know, this cow juice has got me blowing it up. But anyway, I digress. We decided to share a slice of cheesecake with a sundae. Mm -hmm. After... We decided to head to the bar before leaving the restaurant. And that's when the rumbling started. People could actually hear my ass rumble. <laughs> I had to use the washroom. No, oh, Canadian. But my boyfriend wanted to introduce me to someone and stop me. Well, long story short, I shit myself, which leaked onto the bar stool and stunk up the room. It was humiliating, and I had to pay for the damage I did. <laughs> 
<laughs> what damage? You got a projectile dookie? Did you shit out like a like a whole Lincoln log? Was it that bad that you stained the leather? I mean, aren't bar stools typically pretty gross? And man, just you know, you should have just said I can't. If there's anything you took from this Valentine's Day, it's obviously one, don't eat ice cream, but two, if you have to shit yourself, look after you. Look after your pride, your ego. You told us all the buildup, but you skipped the most important part. How did you shit? You know, you, you left out. This is why you don't know how to tell a story. We need to know what happened afterward. What did he say? You probably don't remember because you ran out of their embarrassment. <laughs> Let me be fair to you. The thing you probably only remember is your own scent, your own perfume, which I don't blame you. That's an awful situation to be in, but <laughs> I still put a little bit of responsibility on you. Look, if you're old enough to buy cheesecake and a Sunday and go drinking, it's on you to go to the bathroom and blow that up. Another lesson in today's video is accountability. I'm laughing and I don't even know if the story is going to be good, but it's just titled Valentine's Day Clown. I gotta know. On mobile. So sorry for the shite email. All right, so let's get straight to it. Back in high school, I had my first girlfriend and Valentine's Day came around. Seems like a lot of you don't have Valentine's uh, past high school. What's going on? We should fix this. <laughs> you all should not be so deprived. Unless you want to be alone, that's cool. I had my first girlfriend and Valentine's Day came around. I wanted to be nice and send her some flowers uh, to her job. So I went to my local flower shop to do so. While I was there, I started getting unreasonably nervous. I started second guessing myself. Maybe I should just go get her some chocolates and a bear. Nah, fuck that, I was already there. So I chose the flowers, set the location, I was about to pay, and the lady across the counter hit me with, would you like to write something on the card? I was sweating and felt like taking a shit. I just wanted to leave. So in my best nervous, shaky, wet ass palm, I took the pen and wrote something dumb I can't remember. Fast forward to the day of, she receives the flowers, and you know, I thought all was good. She sends me a message making fun of my handwriting, making fun of what I said, and just overall roasting me. Little did I know, so did everyone else at her job, meaning they all roasted him. I had to read this twice. <laughs> the following week, she dumped me, and I've never recovered from it. Uh, that happened when I was 16. I'm 26 now, and I've been single since. Dude. You sent flowers to an asshole. That's all that happened. You sent flowers to an asshole. Don't let this ruin your mentality, okay? And you shouldn't have been single for 10 years, man. 10 years? Come on. No one is worth that. Everyone's mid in high school. It's, it's, it's not worth losing this much of yourself over. Here's what happened. You bought some flowers and you sent them to an asshole who was raised by assholes. And this is probably what happened when those flowers touched down on the counter. Her mom got jealous because she doesn't get flowers anymore because she's an asshole. And her husband's an asshole, but they're just this recurring loop of dickhead where one doesn't do something nice for the other because one it doesn't like the other and then they get petty and blah, blah, blah. So your nice gesture landed on the counter. And there's a chance that girl liked that. But then her mom got jealous and was like, what little bitch b brought you flowers on Valentine's Day? And uh, she, you know, you know, her no backbone having ass uh, <laughs> was like, yeah, I, I don't know. It's this, it's this punk ass kid. And, and then they picked out your handwriting. You know, they picked out a little card you wrote. And they're like, look at, him, look at him. Look at this little bitch. He likes you so much. He couldn't keep it together. He couldn't keep it together when he wrote you this nice little note. That's how much he likes you. What a fucking idiot. And then they're neglectful father slash husband joined the mix and he was like uh, what is this women don't deserve nice things everyone stop talking and go back to work get these bitch ass little flowers out of here and i most certainly don't want you dating anyone that buys you flowers that's what happened and you let these losers influence you into not having a relationship or not even attempting one after high school that was a nice gesture man and it was just the wrong girl there are plenty of girls out there that that probably would have loved this and would have treated you right so go out there and find you the one who will accept your flowers and your chocolates and your bear. We're rooting for you, man. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> oh, no. I'm just laughing at this modern love story. Look at this. My middle school crush admitted his love to me on Roblox. Yep, he did on Valentine's Day. We knew each other in real life. We went to the same school, but we basically only made any physical contact in Roblox. <laughs> Just practicing for the metaverse. And we were a thing for a year, I guess. Now, was this in school or in Roblox? Now, I want to deck him in the face every time I see him. Uh, eat shit, Sean. Wow. Anyway, here's us. <laughs> here's us, dude. <laughs> 
if you two stayed together, do you think you would have hung this up in your house? Yeah, this is me and Macy. We're Roblox sweethearts. <laughs> <laughs> what a world we live in, man. You can find love and commit violence on Roblox, all at the age of 14, which I guess was the same uh, you know, for kids that had Grand Theft Auto, but you couldn't fall in love with Grand Theft Auto, you know. Actually, you could, but it, it was most definitely with code. It was not with another person. Either way, hilarious story. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is weird DMs, so, you know, we got to throw a little incest in there. My dad gave me lingerie for Valentine's Day. See, this is the problem with men. They just fall in love with their own creations, don't they? Men cannot get away from their own work. It's tragic. Hey, Noel, bit of a disturbing one today. My whole life growing up, my mom always got a little Valentine's Day gift for my brothers, and my dad would get one for me. Once I was 18, I started dating the first guy that I was okay with introducing my parents to. My dad didn't really like him, and he turned into a maniac. <laughs> ah, man. This is so weird already. It's now just occurring to me. How many women find out, you know, like 20 years after high school, they, they just wake up one day and go, oh, my dad was like attracted. <laughs> I'm only laughing because it's funny. Um, my dad was really big on no sex before marriage. Shout out Jesus Christ. And I guess one day he saw that the back seats of my station wagon were folded down. He correctly assumed my boyfriend and I had been doing the deed and flipped his shit. He thought it would be clever to buy me red lacy lingerie and give that to me as my Valentine's Day gift. When I opened it, I was obviously horrified. But I guess he thought it was a good segue into yelling at me about the dangers of sex. Oh. He started off with, so this is who you are now, huh? And went into some good insults about my purity and yada yada and why he couldn't just bring this up with me normally. I'll never know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What a fucking winner this guy is. <laughs> Listen, you can send this clip to your dad. You're a moron, dude. You're 100% a moron. What a strange person you are. You had a kid, and then you go, yeah, I should talk to her about having sex by buying her lingerie. <laughs> nice, dude. Nice. Were you thinking about writing slut on her door with red paint as well? You, <laughs> you dummy. <laughs> what a psycho, man. I hope you don't talk to this guy anymore. Long story short, he meant to return the lingerie but forgot about it sitting in his closet, so I took it and wore it while with my boyfriend. No, you didn't. The same year I left for college, my parents got divorced, so I haven't spoken to him since. Yeah, nice. Good on you. Maybe someday I'll thank him for the lingerie and the daddy issues. No. No, because he will like that. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Just um, just get married to the owner of the Charlotte Hornets. Now, you know what would be really funny is a story where... um. My girlfriend cheated on me with her dad on Valentine's. Yep, that's going to do it for today's video. Everyone have a nice Valentine's Day. Goodbye. <laughs> hey, she's playing and I had to switch it up. Yeah, I might lose a few, ask me if I give a fuck.